Hello class 7 students, welcome back to the history class. Today we are going to start chapter 3, the Sultanate period. Learning objectives, the Mamluk dynasty 1206 to 1290 CE, Iltutmish 1211 to 1236 CE, Balban 1266 to 1288 CE, Jalaluddin Firoz Khalji 1290 to 1296 CE, the Tughlaq dynasty 1320 to 1414 CE, Muhammad bin Tughlaq 1325 to 1351 CE, the Sayyid dynasty 1414 to 1451 CE, some aspects of Sultanate rules, Kutubuddin Ebak 1206 to 1210 CE, Razia Sultan 1236 to 1240 CE, the Khalji dynasty 1260 to 1320 CE, Alauddin Khalji 1296 to 1316 CE, Gyasuddin Tughlaq 1320 to 1325 CE, Firoz Shah Tughlaq, 1351 to 1388 CE, the Lodi dynasty, 1451 to 1526 CE. Let's warm up. The given picture shows coins of Muhammad bin Tughlaq. A. How these coins are different from earlier era coins. B. Can you guess the metal from which these coins are made up of? Application skills. The Sultan was considered as the head of the Delhi Sultanate. His words was regarded as the law. He was also the chief executive, the highest judicial authority and the commander-in-chief of the army. Thus, he was an absolute ruler. He considered himself a part of the Islamic world. He was advised by the chief Qazi. The officials maintained all records and they also collected revenue. The Wazir was the main figure in the administration. He was also the head of the revenue department. The Bakshi was the playmaster of the army. The Qazi was the chief judge. He also gave advice to the Sultan on religious issues. Several other officers acted as the administrative heads of various departments. Justice was based on the holy law in the case of Muslims. The Sultan did not interfere in the traditional laws of the Hindus. Hindus were allowed to settle their cases in their own panchayat. The civil administration of the Sultanate was a continuation of the existing one in the state. Answer the following questions. A. Mention the importance of Sultan in the Sultanate period. B. What was the role of Wazir in the administration? C. What was the condition of Hindus in the Sultanate period? After defeating Prithviraj Chauhan in the second battle of Tarayan in 1191, Muhammad Ghori became the king of the Delhi region. He had no children of his own and he considered his Turkish slaves as one of his own. After his death, one of his slaves named Qutubuddin, Ebag became the Sultan of Delhi and founded the Mamluk dynasty. The Sultanate lasted ruled for almost 300 years from 1206 to 1526 and this period is known as the age of Delhi Sultanate. Five dynasties that ruled during this period were then conquered and overtaken by Mughal dynasty. Fact file. The historians gather information from old documents, evidences and accounts of travelers. The existence of the Sultanate period is registered mainly through accounts and chronicles of travelers and courtiers, while other evidence like coins, inscriptions and monuments are as important as the documents. The Mamluk dynasty 1206 to 1290 CE. In Arabic language, Mamluk means owned. After the death of Muhammad Ghori, his territories were divided into four parts and given to his Turkish slaves, who he considered as his own children. The region of Delhi fell under Qutubuddin Abak, who founded the Mamluk dynasty or the slave dynasty. Qutubuddin Abak 1206 to 1210 CE. Qutubuddin Aibak was the first Sultan of Delhi. The Indian territories conquered by Muhammad Ghori were given to him to rule. He started the Mamluk dynasty and ruled during 1206 to 1210. During this short period, he expanded his territories all over North India and the kingdom became the Delhi Sultanate. This is the picture of Qutubuddin Aibak.
He was a kind-hearted and generous man. He made a lot of charity in the interest of his people and was known as Lakh Baksh. This is the picture of Qutub Minar. Lakh Baksh by his people. Administration and Rule He tried to set up an efficient administrative structure and shifted his capital from Lahore to Delhi. During his rule, he faced repeated Mongol attacks and the Rajputs and other defeated kings constantly tried to regain their independence. He was a builder and began the construction of Qutub Minar and Qubbatul Islam Mosque. He died in 1210 CE while playing a game of polo. Fact file The iron pillar in the Qutub Minar complex was constructed in the ancient period which has not rusted in over 1600 years of its existence. Il Tutmish, 1211 to 1236 CE. After the death of Qutubuddin Ebak, his son in law Shamshuddin Il Tutmish succeeded to the throne in 1211 CE. He is regarded as the first ruler or the real founder of the Sultanate dynasty by historians. He faced many problems regarding the territorial control that he had to take after the death of Qutubuddin Ebak. He faced them all strongly and suppressed rebellions within his empire. This is the tomb of Il Tutmish. Administration and Rule Il Tutmish was a great ruler. He regained control over all the territories that had slipped out of the hands of the kingdom. After Qutubuddin Ebak's death, he saved his region from Mongolian invasions by refusing to give shelter to a Persian ruler who was pursued by Mongolian ruler, Chinggis Khan. He expanded his territories, defeating and seizing many Rajput kingdoms and covering the east from Bihar up to Bengal by crushing the revolts. He had a number of sons, but none of them was thrown worthy. Before his death in 1236 CE, he wanted his daughter to succeed him. After his death, he was succeeded by his son Rukna Uddin Feroz Shah, but was dethroned because of his incompetence in administering the kingdom. Razia Sultan 1236 to 1240 CE. Razia Sultan was the first and the only female Sultan during the entire Sultanate period. Her reign was short and full of problems. The nobles were already unhappy by the female ruler, but with the support of the people, she became Razia Sultan of Delhi. She was opposed by the nobles in every decision she made as they did not want to take orders from a woman and were extremely impatient with her. In 1240 CE, they rebelled, overthrew and assassinated her. This is the picture of Razia Sultan. Gia Suddin Balban 1266-1286 CE After the death of Razia Sultan, many kings tried to succeed the throne. Nasiruddin Mahmud, a son of Ultitmush, ruled from 1240-1266 to CE. But he was merely a puppet in the hands of powerful nobles. One of the most powerful nobles during Il Tutmish was Giyasuddin Balban. He was the real power behind the Nasiruddin Mahmud and after establishing himself as the most powerful among other nobles, he declared himself the Sultan in 1266 CE. Administration and Rule As Balban sat on the throne, his plan of action was to break resistance by other nobles and to suppress revolt at its very core. He reorganized and strengthened the armies and guarded the northwestern boundaries against Mongol raids. He established an efficient spy system to ensure the loyalty of his people and made himself the supreme authority. He introduced a Persian system of prostration the way he would be looked up by his people. The people felt strongly against this custom as it meant giving him the place of God. The end of Mamluk dynasty. Balban died in 1286 CE. He was succeeded by many rulers from 1286 to 1290 CE, who proved incapable as the rulers. They were weak and incompetent. In 1290 CE, the Mamluk dynasty came to an end and the Khalji's noble captured the throne. The Khalji dynasty 1290 to 1320 CE. The last ruler of Mamluk dynasty, Muizuddin Kaikabad, was killed by Jalaluddin Firuz Khalji in 1290 CE and the later became the first ruler of Khalji dynasty. The Khaljis had their ancestry from Turku Afghan. The Khaljis ruled for three decades and expanded and established the Sultanate up to 
Central India. In this map, you can see the extent of Khalji dynasty. Jalaluddin Firoz Khalji, 1290-1296 CE. Firoz Khan was already in his 70s when he took over the throne. He was a weak ruler and had to spend most of his time suppressing the rebellions. He had a weak strategy against the Mongols and gave away one of his daughters to a Mongol leader in the marriage. He was killed by his nephew, Al Ali Gurshab in 1296 CE, who later became Alauddin Khalji. This is the picture of Alauddin Khalji. Alauddin Khalji, 1296 to 1316 CE. The most powerful ruler of the Khalji dynasty, Alauddin Khalji, was the first Turkish Sultan to build an empire in India. He was an ambitious ruler and his kingdom saw expansion in territories as well as military. He imposed different laws and system to ensure his military power. After his death in 1316, Tughlaq dynasty came into existence, administration and rule. Alauddin Khalji was a great general and a clever administrator. The Khalji empire witnessed great expansion after conquering Gujarat and Malwa that brought the control of western seaports. In these images, you can see the coins of the time of Alauddin Khalji. The expansion expanded up to Rajasthan and then in Deccan. The defeated kings were not deprived of their kingdoms, but they were to rule under his supreme power. He established an espionage system to maintain loyalty and banned wine with the nobles to avoid revolts. He increased land taxes and lowered the prices in basic commodities to maintain a large army. Economic reforms during Alauddin Khalji. Economic measures were taken because Alauddin Khalji wanted to maintain his large armies. He divided the land according to the fertility and cultivation and the taxes were charged accordingly. He kept a strict check on corruption and introduced a market control policy where he lowered the prices of basic commodities that resulted in low salaries of soldiers. To make more money, he initiated revenue reforms by paying his soldiers in cash, branding the horses to maintain their quality and full descriptions for each soldier. Fact file Many of the administrative techniques and measures were followed by the succeeding rulers like Sher Shah and Akbar. The end of Khalji dynasty. Alauddin Khalji's death was the beginning of the end of this dynasty. A war of succession ensued, broke, and the last ruler, Khasru Malik, was defeated by a Tughlaq king, Giyasuddin Tughlaq, who founded the Tughlaq dynasty in 1320 CE. The Tughlaq dynasty, 1326 to 1414 CE. The Tughlaq dynasty ruled for nearly 100 years. This dynasty saw two prominent rulers, Muhammad bin Tughlaq and Feroz Shah Tughlaq. The kingdom saw an expansion and a great number of administrative schemes. The Sultanate period saw its last glory days during this dynasty. In this map, you can see the extent of Tughlaq dynasty. Giyasuddin Tughlaq, 1320 to 1325 CE. He was the first ruler of Tughlaq dynasty and brought expansion as well as consolidation in the Sultanate. He suppressed rebellions and strengthened the kingdom. He ruled for only five years and was succeeded by his son Jona Khan who took the name Muhammad bin Tughlaq. Muhammad bin Tughlaq 1325 to 1351 CE. Muhammad bin Tughlaq came to power in 1325 CE and was a ruler as well as scholar. He had a deep sense of justice and an open mind. He was one of the most powerful rulers but gradually lost trust and respect of his nobles and people because of the failed schemes, he continuously introduced all at the wrong time. Administration and Rule Muhammad bin Tughlaq was an intellectual sultan. He expanded the empire from Deccan to southern states like Odisha. He made certain experiments in the administration like shifting the capital, introducing token money and taxation of fertile lands during the famine that made him very unpopular among his nobles and people. Revolts broke against him and he died in 1351 CE while chasing and punishing rebellions in Gujarat. This image showing the coins at the time of Tughlaqs. The Sultan raised taxes on fertile lands of Doab region. 
the orders were taken at the wrong time as this region was being under a famine people discarded their lands and revolted against the sultan ultimately forcing the sultan to withdraw the orders the next experiment took place in 1327 when sultan decided to shift the capital from delhi to devgiri which he renamed daulatabad instead of shifting the administration he ordered to shift the whole population of delhi after 2 years the shift took place again because it was difficult to administer the northern states from the deccan region people died and suffered great losses including their interest in sultan the third experiment was the introduction of token currency in 1329 because of the shortage of silver the sultan decided to produce coins made of brass and copper they had the same value as of silver coin since copper and brass were easily available and cheap a lot of forged money minted in the kingdom heading to a decline ruin of tugluks in the foreign trade some other military expeditions like karachi and khurasan expeditions brought more failure to muhammad's rule ibn batuta was a muslim traveler and explorer from morocco who is considered one of the greatest travelers of all time ibn batuta was famous for his traveling and undertaking excursions known as the rihla he was a qazi for 8 years in the court of muhammad bin tughlaq a qazi ul humalik was the chief judge of the sultan and was the head of the legal system he heard appeals from lower courts as well he wrote in his court in his account that the sultan had many great ideas and plans that failed because the common people could not understand him fact file journeys of ibn batuta lasted for a period of almost 30 years covering nearly the whole of the known islamic world and beyond feroz shah tughlaq 1351 to 1388 CE Feroz Shah Tughlaq was the cousin of Muhammad bin Tughlaq he came into power by the support of nobles and other important people in the administration he was a literate person and a reformer during his rule his main aim was to consolidate the kingdom during the sultanate period his reign had the most expanded territories this is the picture of Feroz Shah Tughlaq After his death in 1388 the revolts broke up the kingdom as the successors were incapable of holding the empire together resulting in the decline of Tughlaq dynasty administrative rule Feroz Shah was a reformer and a constructive sultan he built many tanks wells canals and hospitals he was a patronized scholar and established many educational institutions he built hundreds of towns founded many and restored old buildings the noble and people were happy under his reign the end of tughlaq dynasty and timur's invasion after feroz shah tughlaq's death the empire was divided many regions became independent and the sultanate was reduced to delhi and nearby regions the mongols tried to invade the indian territories many times during the past three dynasties but failed but after the end of tughlaq dynasty it became quite easy to invade the mongol ruler Timur ruled over a large empire in Central Asia defeated the last sultan of Tughlaq dynasty Nasiruddin Tughlaq who attacked and invaded Delhi thousands were killed and the wealth was looted after the invasion Timur left Delhi and appointed Khizr Khan in charge of the region Khizr Khan became the first ruler of the Sayyid dynasty the Sayyid dynasty 1414 to 1451 CE The Sayyid dynasty ruled for a short time. It was weak and the last dynasty to have Turkish origins. Four rulers came during this period. The first ruler was Khizr Khan Sayyid and the last ruler was Alauddin Alam Shah Sayyid. Khizr Khan was the governor in Multan under Feroz Shah Tughlaq. He joined Timur's invasion and started his rule in Delhi after conquering it in 1414. Khizr Khan was succeeded by his son Mubarak Shah Sayyid in 1421 he could have become a great ruler but the nobles never supported him Muhammad Shah Sayyid succeeded to the throne in 1434 and the nobles enjoyed great power under his reign Alauddin Alam Shah was the last ruler of Sayyid dynasty with his brief rule from 1443 to 1451 he lost ruins of Sayyid dynasty Delhi to Behlul Lodi who established and became the first ruler of the Lodi dynasty in 1451 CE the 
Lodi dynasty 1451 to 1526 CE. The Lodi dynasty, unlike former four dynasties, had its origin in Afghan ancestry. The first ruler of this dynasty was Behlul Lodi in 1451. He tried to reconstruct and bring back the Sultanate. This is the picture of Behlul Lodi. He appointed loyal Afghan nobles in place of rebellion governors and expanded the territory from Punjab to Bihar. This is the picture of tomb of Sikandar Lodi. He was succeeded by his son Sikandar Lodi in 1489. He was the most powerful ruler in Lodi dynasty and annexed Bihar and Jaunpur. He founded the city of Agra and made it the capital. He was a reformer and signed a treaty with Bengal. After his death in 1517, his second son Ibrahim Lodi succeeded to the throne. The nobles were against him and conspired with Babur, a Mughal ruler, to overthrow him. In 1526, Babur defeated Ibrahim in the first battle of Panipat and the Sultanate period was officially ended. Some aspects of Sultanate rule. The Sultan. He was the most powerful and important person in the empire. He had the highest authority, but to rule the kingdom, he needed the support of nobles and other religious figures known as ulema. He was both the chief justice and the commander-in-chief of the army. He had to be practical, intelligent and resourceful. He should be wise and clever at the same time. During the Sultanate period, there was a constant conflict for authority between the Sultan and the nobles or the Sultan and Ulema. But the last word was of the Sultan. The nobles. The nobles were the high-ranking officials who helped the king by administrating certain departments. They were divided into three classes, the Khans, the Maliks and the Amirs. The Khans were the highest of all. There were four departments in administering the empire. Divan e Wizarat, Finance, Divan e Risalat, Religious Matters, Divan e Arts, Military Affairs, Divan e Insha, Royal Correspondence. The Vakil Idar looked after the entire royal household. Wazir was the most powerful rank under the Sultan. He was the head of the royal treasure. The Amirji Hajib was responsible for all the court ceremonies. Together, these nobles and officials helped the Sultan to administer his empire a just and fair manner. But there was a constant conflict between the officials and religious nobles who had more influence over the Sultan. The land was divided among military and civilian officials. The piece of land was called Iktas and the holding officials were Iqdars or Muktis. They collected the taxes and paid a part of it to the Sultan, the army and the empire. The Sultanate army had to remain powerful to maintain their authorities over the territories. The army included infantry or the foot soldiers, the cavalry or the horseback soldiers, elephants, archers, and sapers. Additional troops were provided by the Iktadars on demand. The entire empire was divided into subas or provinces. The subas were disintegrated into sheikhs, and these sheikhs were further divided into Parganas, a group of villages. The Iktadars were head of Parganas and controlled all the major and minor acts in the administration. The society and the economy. The Muslims had been influenced by the Hindu caste system. The nobles were the topmost and highest ranking class. The Sultan had many slaves and they were provided with high education. Only the loyal and capable ones rose to certain ranks in the army or officials. The peasants of the common people lived a life of misery as taxes were certainly high and the revenue officials constantly exploited them for their poverty. There were certain taxes that made the life of common man more miserable. Taxes like kharaj, land tax, ghari, house tax and charai, cattle tax were enough to deprive the common man of his luxuries. Some sultans used taxes to maintain their large armies because of which the prices rose and so did the rebellions. Fact file. During the Sultanate period, many sultans ordered to destroy temples and other monuments that had relevance with any other religions. The Muslims were stern in implementing their own religion over the people.
These are some of the maps given below explaining the extent of the of the dynasties of Sultanate period. First, Mamluk dynasty, Khalji dynasty, Tughlaq dynasty, Lodi dynasty. Value and life skills. You are a peasant or the common person under the Sultanate period and you cannot pay the taxes demanded by the Sultan. What will you do to convince the Sultan about your problem? Recapitulation. Five dynasties ruled over Delhi during the Sultanate period from 1206 to 1526 CE. The first dynasty was the Mamluk dynasty or the slave dynasty. They ruled from 1206 to 1290 CE. The founder of the slave dynasty was Qutubuddin Aibak. The second dynasty was Khalji dynasty and Alauddin Khalji was one of the most important sultans of this dynasty. This dynasty ruled from 1290 to 1329. The Tughlaq dynasty ruled from 1329 to 1414 and was the last powerful dynasty of this period. The invasion of Timur disintegrated the kingdom and Sayyid dynasty came into existence in 1414 and ruled till 1451. The last dynasty of the Sultanate period was the Lodi dynasty. It ruled from 1451 till 1526 until Baba defeated the last king, Ibrahim Lodi, and that marked the end of the Sultanate period over Delhi. Thank you class. Let's meet again in the next chapter.